Tonight on CTV News, we take a look at the start of Native American Heritage Month at CSU. Then we discuss all of the political figures visiting Fort Collins and feature a local nonprofit store that focuses on helping women in developing nations. All this and more on CTV News starting now. Good evening, CSU and Fort Collins. Thanks for tuning in to CTV News. I'm Bryn Carmen. And I'm Alexandria Clough. Deputies from the Larimer County Sheriff's Office found a body of a teenage boy in San Berthoud High School early this morning. The LSCO arrived at the school after the teenage boy's parents called, worried about his safety, and suggested that he may have gone to the high school. The deputies found a door open and the body of a male teenager inside. The school tweeted early this morning that classes were canceled for the day and all entrances to the school were blocked off. The cause and manner of the death and identity of the male have not yet been released. There are no known threats to the school, students, or staff. Anyone with any information about Thursday's death can call the Larimer County Sheriff's Office at 970-416-1985. The 33rd Annual American Indian Science and Engineering Society powwow started on Friday with a bang. The powwow kicks off the Native American Heritage Month and is filled with song, dance, and food. The powwow is a great way for people to learn about the Native American culture. I asked one of the dancers why he dances. Um, sharing my culture with everybody. Uh, I dance for those who can't dance, uh, those who want to dance, and those who are uh, gone before us. Dance for them, dance for the future generations, and um, it just makes me feel really good. The whole purpose of this event is to bring awareness to what the Native American culture is. Well, it's just trying to share our culture. It's very unique, so it's not really often talked about or even seen. It's kind of, say, go out and experience. So it's just good to see that it's kind of being shared. It's being accepted everywhere, because we like to share it through song, dance, crafts, and especially food. Everybody likes foods. While people did enjoy watching the different dances, the fry bread was a huge hit at the powwow. Even the dancers had to have some. Fry bread, so it's kind of like almost a more cultural thing. So it's kind of grown up with everybody. Of course, there's different various styles because it's food. And it's almost like a native style funnel cake or, or sopapilla as like Hispanics have. But then it's more, uh, it, the way it's different, it tastes different and we usually make it a little bit larger. The powwow was only the beginning of Native American Heritage Month. For more information about events this month, go to nacc.colostate.edu slash calendar. With the general election only five days away, visits from political figures and campaigning has becoming more frequent around Fort Collins. Democratic U.S. Senator for Colorado Michael Bennett was campaigning on the CSU campus today. Bennett, who was first elected for the U.S. Senate in 2010, is confident about his chances against Republican rival Daryl Glenn. He says he still thinks that he isn't taking anything for granted right now. All he's focusing on is getting people to vote. There is not in the United States of America a wider range or a wider gap between the two policy positions of my, my record and my opponent's view of what he wants to do in the Senate. And I hope people learn about what that is and I hope they'll vote accordingly. And I hope even if you're not going to vote for me, that you'll vote because we should. Tomorrow, Friday, November 4th, the Colorado Republican U.S. Senate nominee Daryl Glenn will be on the CSU Plaza at 1145 in the morning to campaign. Additionally, past U.S. President Bill Clinton will be in Fort Collins from 4 to 6 in the evening at the New Belgium Brewery to campaign for presidential nominee Hillary Clinton. You can RSVP for the rally online at the Clinton's website. Finally, Libertarian Party presidential candidate Gary Johnson will be back in Colorado Sunday, November 6th, with doors opening at 2 and the event starting at 3 in the afternoon at the Colorado Christian University. RSVPs are encouraged, but not required. With election season, obviously comes voting, and this that means ballots. In certain states across the country, taking a selfie or picture with your ballot is illegal. Colorado currently does not allow voters to take pictures with their ballots. However, this could change in the near future. This coming Wednesday, November 9th, a Gen Denver federal judge is scheduled to hear arguments against Col Colorado's misdemeanor crime of disseminating a completed ballot. The law is not strictly enforced. However, taking a picture of your ballot can potentially lead to fines or jail time. I understand the enthusiasm, completely get it. I love that. But just don't uh, take a picture of your voter ballot. Take a picture of the outside of it, that's fine but not the, uh, the content and the way you voted. 
In the Old Town Square lies a 16-year-old free trade store that is home to some of the most beautiful and unique artisans Fort Collins has ever seen. The store manager has called 10,000 Villages home since it opened and loves her job more than anyone I've ever met. 10,000 Villages in Old Town Fort Collins is run by Wendy Poppin, a woman passionate about helping women in developing nations. I love it for a million reasons. I mean, I, I, I really believe in fair trade. I believe that these, I've been to a lot of developing countries in my life and I, I see the poverty and I see what's going on. I see beautiful things being made and these people basically giving it away. I'm a feminist and um, most of the artisans are women. And I think that's awesome. A lot of, a lot of the women don't have much clout in their in their communities. And now that they're making these things and making money, they all of a sudden are are revered and respected, and not getting beaten by their husbands anymore. This nonprofit fair trade company represents about 35 countries, and the corporate office that buys and communicates with artisans is based in Pennsylvania. And the way we do it is we look at the whole world and find the, the poorest countries and then we divide our budget accordingly to who needs help the most that year. In addition to connecting with crafters all around the world, the company must also follow severe guidelines when purchasing products and bringing items into North America. We're also set, set to um, very high standards from the Fair Trade Federation of making sure that the artisan who made these things really is making the money that we're that you're spending on something. After this process, the next step for Poppin is to order items the corporate office has purchased. She has a keen eye for what the community wants and has many best sellers. It's the, our good luck pig. So it's a little tiny pig from Chile made from the indigenous um, dirt there. And um, it's our it, we're the only store that has it as a number one seller. Poppin has a heart of gold, love for the world, and impactful connection with people. It is no surprise she has been the store manager since 10,000 Villages opened 16 years ago in Old Town. The store's vision and purpose mirror her own. I've always had the feeling that in my life I always wanted to have jobs that made the world better. Poppin says if you can't go and visit some of the faraway places on your bucket list to come into the store and shop through some of the crafts and artwork you may find abroad. She says shopping at 10,000 Villages can be a trip in itself. On Saturday, November 5th, the 63rd Annual World Unity Fair will take place on the CSU campus. The event, which is hosted by the Office of International Programs, brings different groups from all across CSU and Fort Collins together to celebrate the, the diverse cultures within the community. The Unity Fair will include different traditions, traditions, tastes, music, and dance from around the world, as well as crafts, games, informational booths, and international bazaar. The fair is free and will start at 3 in the afternoon and continue until 9 at night in the Lori Student Center ballrooms and theater. Coming up next, our very own Alec Erickson will have his full weather forecast. Then Ace and Carilla will give us an update in the world of Ram sports. Tune in to KCSU, your student-run radio station at Colorado State University. Live 24 hours a day, every day at 90.5 FM and KCSUFM.com. Live local new music now and news, talk, and sports. KCSU, the radio voice of Colorado State, on the air since 1964. You're watching CTV, produced by Colorado State University students, bringing you news, weather, sports, and entertainment from campus and beyond. CTV live Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. on campus and Fort Collins on Channel 11. Repeats at midnight, 8 a.m., noon, and 2 p.m. The Rocky Mountain Collegian is your student-run news and information platform. Pick up your paper on campus or around Fort Collins Monday through Thursday with special editions Fridays. And check out Collegian.com anytime for all the latest updates. News, sports, entertainment, opinion, and more. The Rocky Mountain Collegian, serving Colorado State since 1891. College Avenue has been your student magazine for the last 10 years. College Avenue prints once a month covering topics that are relevant to the CSU and Fort Collins community. We also print special editions like the graduation guides at the end of each semester, the best of CSU each fall, and the orientation guide each summer. Look for us on racks around campus, off campus, or online at collegian.com under the College Avenue tab. Hey there Rams, I'm Alec Erickson filling in for Nicole Conklin and let's take a look at tonight's temperatures. Already our current temperature is at 54 degrees. Our sunset was a 
about a couple hours ago at 5.53 p.m. and it's only getting earlier. And we have a slight wind coming in from the southwest at 3 miles per hour. Although on the bright side, it's going to be clear tonight, which is a good thing because our tonight lows are going to be really chilly. If you take a look ahead at Sterling, it's going to be 34 degrees with a 37 in Lamar and a 38 in Burlington. However, along the I-25 corridor, it's going to be about high 30s to low 40s with 40 in Denver, 37 in Fort Collins, 39 Colorado Springs, and 36 in Pueblo. All along the western slope, though, it's going to get really chilly, so you're going to want to bundle up if you're over there. 32 in Telluride, 41 in Grand Junction, and a 28 in Craig. Uh, looking ahead, though, it's going to warm up slightly, not too much, though. So expect to wear a little bit of layers tomorrow as well, because 61 is the high for Craig, 66 in Grand Junction, a 50 in Telluride, and then all along the I-25 corridors, it's mid the high 60s with 65 in Pueblo, 61 in Colorado Springs, 69 in Denver will be the high temperature along the I-25 corridor, and 66 in Fort Collins. Sterling will have the highest temperature in Colorado of 72 and a 69 in Lamar. So it's going to warm up a little bit, but don't expect those warm temperatures to last. Planning your Friday, 8 a.m. It's going to be chilly out the door. It's been chilly out the door every day this week. Expect much of the same. It's going to be 40 degrees, but still clear. Around noon, you'll warm up to 61 degrees, be cool and clear. And then by the time you get to 4 p.m., it's going to be 66 degrees. Starting to feel a lot like fall and winter is coming, people. So you've got to prepare and bring those layers. Now looking ahead at your week. It is going to be pretty clear on Friday, like I said, 68 degrees most with a low of 42. And then on Saturday, you can expect 68 as your high with a low of 41. It's going to be mostly cloudy. And then on Sunday, partly cloudy with 71 as your high and 38 as your low. Monday through Thursday, you can expect be around low 70s, high 60s with 70 as your high on Tuesday. And then Thursday, expect temperatures to start cooling down. It's going to be 64 as your high, partly cloudy temperatures. And you know, it's starting to feel a lot like fall winter temperatures, but we haven't seen too much rain or snow, unlike that World Series, however. Aislinn, did you get a chance to watch the World Series last night? Yes, even with that rain delay, it was a great game, really exciting to watch. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot of excitement. I know it was a real nail biter, so many extra innings. Like I said, rain delays. I know I was on the edge of my seat, just like so many Cubs fans out there. They just want to see if that curse would be broken. Oh, yes. Well, the curse was broken. And up next, after the commercial break, I'll have more sports updates for you. Don't worry, 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Good evening, Rams. I'm Aislinn Carrillo, bringing you all the latest updates in the world of CSU sports. But first, some national sports news. After a 108-year dry spell, the Chicago Cubs finally won another World Series last night, beating the Cleveland Indians 8-7. Game 7 was a roller coaster of emotions for fans, including extra innings and a rain delay between the 9th and 10th inning, with the score tied 6-6. Ultimately, the Cubs were able to pull off the W, officially ending the famous Cubbies curse. After the Cubs won, CSU reposted an old tweet sent out by President Tony Frank in February of 2016. The tweet said, it is a rare CSU snow day. Does this mean 2016 will be the year the Cubs win the World Series? Signed, TF. So shout out to Dr. Frank for predicting the miraculous win and here's to hoping for another snow day at CSU this coming winter. After last week's bye, the Colorado State football team is back at it as the Rams take on Fresno State Saturday at 1.30. 
Last year, it was nothing less of an intense game at Fresno State. CSU overcame a 17-point lead with its first three scores made by special teams, two of which being touchdowns. Early in the third, CSU found itself in the end zone again, this time by offense, with a run by Izzy Matthews and then to top off the game, an incredible pass from Nick Stevens to Joe Hansley, making the final score 34-31, Rams win. The Rams may have an advantage this weekend as the Bulldogs have had a tough season so far. Fresno State has yet to win in conference play and just recently let go of head coach Tim DeRuiter. On offense, we're looking at two fairly new quarterbacks here. Both Chase and Virgil and Nick Stevens saw the field in the previous season, took some time off for their own considered reasons, and now both hold the starting quarterback position. These QBs are also similar in terms of accuracy passing, both completing a little over half of their attempted passes so far this season. With last week's rest and this week's solid set of practices, CSU is going into this weekend fresh and ready to compete. Coach Mike Bobo has recently recognized the competition within practice and how players are putting in full effort and taking every opportunity to get better and potentially see the field this weekend. If we want to finish the way we say we want to finish, then we've got to put in the work. Um, and we got to, we got to expect to play well on Saturday because, you know, I will say it again, I said it yesterday in the press conference, I, I think this is a talented football team uh, that we're about to play that's got a lot of playmakers on both sides of football. The CSU volleyball team now sits at 9-2 in conference play after Saturday's sweep against Utah State. Lots of preparation went into tonight's match against UNLV, and if the Rams defeat the Rebels, their record would improve to 10-2 and, and also let CSU clinch the first place spot in the Mountain West. Tonight is bound to be a great match, and in just a few hours, we will all know who claims the top spot in conference. Tomorrow night, the CSU women's basketball team will kick off its season facing CSU Pueblo at Moby Arena. Both teams have been tabbed to win their chosen conferences. However, the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference is much less competitive in comparison to the Mountain West. And finally, be on the lookout for preseason player of the year, Ellen Nystrom, as her highly anticipa anticipated final season at CSU starts tomorrow. To close out the night, we'll take a quick look at the weekend ahead. Ram fans can make their way to Moby Arena tomorrow night as CSU women's basketball will finally open up their 2016-2017 season. Saturday, the football team will host Fresno State at 1.30. To finish off your day full of CSU athletics, head to Moby Arena to, su to support the CSU volleyball team as they take on the University of New Mexico at 7. And as always, be sure to visit thecollegian.com and click on that sports tab for full coverage of all your CSU sports this weekend. Entertainment anchor Emma Iannacone is up next. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. That's why we're here. We're free and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Go to GetSchool.com. Good evening, Rams, and welcome back to CTV. I'm your entertainment anchor for tonight, Emma Iannacone. I have the latest in entertainment news, so let's get started. Last night was the Country Music Awards on CMT. There were so many heartfelt moments, such as when Dolly Parton received the Willie Nelson Lifetime Achievement Award. Then Garth Brooks won his fifth Entertainer of the Year Award, and guess who presented it? Taylor Swift. I could have sworn she'd given up her country music days for pop. T-Swift wasn't the only pop star there who seemed a little bit out of place, though. Beyonce performed with the Dixie Chicks. I guess Beyonce is so amazing that even country music fans can't get enough of her. 
feminist icon and former student of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, Emma Watson, shared her love of books yesterday. She placed 100 copies of Maya Angelou's Mom and Me and Mom novel all across the London subway station. This, this is part of the Books on the Underground program where you find a book on the subway, read it, and leave it for another person to find. Earlier this week, Starbucks debuted a green cup that features a collage of people in honor of the upcoming presidential election. The cup is meant to be a symbol of unity during this time of division. This is not the first time Starbucks cups have been political, though. Remember last year when they released a blank red cup for the holiday season and everyone was freaking out because they weren't specific to Christmas? Yeah, that was weird. But fear not, the annual Starbucks red cup will be back after the election. Apple released a new emoji that new emojis with the iOS 10.2 update. Some of the new emojis include bacon, which we've been waiting way too long for, a clown, and a thumbs down. But the real story here is that they redesigned the peach emoji to look more like a real peach. Now I'm not going to say why people are upset about it, but I will say this. We should be so lucky to even have an emoji that resembles a peach. I remember back when we had to use colons and parentheses just to make a smiley face. In local news, there is a new line of co contraception coming to Fort Collins. These condom wrappers depict endangered species such as the sea otter, monarch butterflies, and polar bears. This program comes from the Center of Biological Diversity and is meant to, quote, emphasize the line between human overpopulation and species extinction. Whether you plan on using the eccentric product is up to you, but remember to always be safe, Rams. Well, I'm going to wrap it up for tonight. Tune in next week for our very special hour-long presidential election show. Have a good night, Rams.